Tonight on DC News Now at 6, cherry blossoms in peak bloom. A live report from the Tidal Basin as thousands flock to see the iconic trees. We want you and your family to feel like you can walk around the streets, you know, at any time of the day or night. Plus, two people are dead and five others were hurt after a shooting in the Shaw neighborhood. What we're learning about the victims is community members speak out against the violence. And the first day of spring is tomorrow, but it just doesn't feel like it. How long this chilly air will last? We'll have that coming up for you here in just a bit. Quiet, great place to raise a family. Yeah, this is kind of out of the ordinary for something like this to happen. And a strange boom rocking a Northern Virginia neighborhood this morning. What investigators and neighbors are saying about that Ennendale fire. Also cutting costs at the grocery stores. The apps one local mom is using to save hundreds of dollars every week. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for DC News Now at 6 o'clock. I'm Chris Flanagan. And I'm Annalisa Gale. Taking a live look outside tonight at the Tidal Basin, where thousands of flocking now for the beautiful cherry blossoms in peak bloom, Chris. Yeah, it is just gorgeous out I there, isn't it? it? Yeah, what a great time of the year. All right, we'll have a look at that forecast in just moments. But first, let's get right out to meteorologist Scott Sumner, live at the Tidal Basin tonight. And Scott, a little blustery weather not stopping people from checking out those cherry blossoms. Well, I think I heard part of your question, Chris, because the, there's a plane just zooming across here. So I kind of heard. Uh, but I think what you were asking me is how, how are things out here and what's it, what's the feel or vibe? Uh, basically, it is very nice. There's a lot of folks out and about here uh, taking photos. It feels like it's the middle of summer, but there is a bit of a breeze, as Damon's been telling you, and it feels chillier than the actual temperature reading. Now, I do have a little bit of information. I'll step out of the way here, let my photographer, Anthony, take a shot all the way down. Uh, there's a lot of folks, if you can notice, Anthony, if you can shoot all the way down, there's a lot of people uh, clustered around one particular area, and that's Stumpy. That's the tree that is going to be taken down here, and a lot of people are getting a last look at it uh, as, uh, as this uh, cherry blossom year unfolds. But uh, just some uh, interesting facts. Uh, first of all, the cherry blossoms here, there were about 3,000 that were given uh, to the United States from Japan back in 1912. And the temperatures that these cherry blossoms do best in are between 60 and 68 degrees. It's a little colder than that, as you could tell, and might even be able to hear the wind through the microphone that I'm uh, speaking on. Now, also a couple other interesting facts uh, that I have here are that there's over 100 different varieties of cherry blossom trees and the uh, Yoshino tree is the dominant tree uh, that is seen here across the tidal basin and elsewhere across uh, Washington DC so yeah it is a, a little bit blustery out here uh, but uh, everybody's still having a good time out here back to you in the studio all right Scott can't wait to see your pics <laughs> meanwhile the cherry blossoms are not just a hit here in the DMV people in New York City are also enjoying the cherry blossom bloom on Roosevelt Island. And a fun fact, if you ever take a trip up to the Big Apple, you can catch the blossoms at the Brooklyn Botanic Garden and Flushing Meadows Park in Queens as well. All right, pretty cool stuff there. All right, meteorologist Damon Matson in for Janessa. Tonight we saw Scott's live yeah. shot. Uh, there's still a lot of sunshine out there right oh, now. Yeah but also windy as well. Yeah, unfortunately, it would be great if we just had the sun like we right. did over the weekend, but that wind is giving us something to contend with as well as the chilly temperatures. There it is, folks. It has been blustery like this throughout the entire day, and I was saying this earlier. Last year, we dealt with some of the chillier weather. Then it warmed up just perfectly as we hit peak bloom. This year, we got the warm weather first, and now those temperatures have taken a step back during peak bloom here. So yeah, we have steady wind speeds. 15 to 25 miles an hour that is continuing to usher in some very chilly temperatures as we only have 30s to the west 40s through the heart of the DMV and we're still holding on to a few lower 50s back off to the south and east but thankfully that's all we're dealing with our friends off to the north and west in this pattern here dealing with a lot of snow the lake effect snow machine going across Pennsylvania New York and the rest of the Great Lakes so yes folks it will get chilly 
chilly over the next few hours. The wind will continue to be blustery. When do we see a warm up and calmer conditions? We're going to have a full look at your forecast coming up here in just a bit. OK, Damon, thanks. We'll see you then. Meanwhile, we'll have an update uh, tonight. The search is on for suspects in a deadly mass shooting in the Shaw neighborhood. Early Sunday morning, seven people were shot. Two of them killed and happened near the intersection of 7th and P Streets in Northwest D.C. That's where we find D.C. News Now's Randy Bass, who has the latest on the investigation. Yeah, right now those neighbors still rattled a day after waking up to gunshots early Sunday morning here on the sidewalk. Still visible right now, blood spatter left behind. And another reminder that whoever did this is still out there. I heard a round of gunshots go off really rapid fire like someone was empty in a clip. Waking up to the sound of those deadly shots with a police investigation and search for suspects underway Sunday. A frightening sight for neighbors. It's scary to think about living here. It's scary to think about something like that happening. Um, you know, and not sure why or, you know, is this targeted? Is this random? Right now, more questions than answers for so many. Police say it may have been more than one shooter intentionally targeting this group and killing two 32 year old men, Anthony Brown of D.C. and Jay Lux of Baltimore. So far in 2024, 32 homicides reported in the city, trending down compared to this time last year. It's little consolation to community members coming to grips with tragedy. It's very concerning and scary, especially anywhere. And I know all the residents are very scared, but just as like a, a native, it's it's common, but it's, it's definitely something that needs to be fixed. Right now, police not releasing much information about any possible suspects here in the case. It's also not clear if any surveillance footage was captured during or after this shooting. Right now, though, police asking anybody with any information to come forward. They're offering $50,000 for information that leads to an arrest and conviction in this case. In Northwest, I'm Randy Bass, DC News Now. All right, Randy, thank you. Well, starting today, people who refuse to pay for a metro in D.C. could face a fine of up to $100 or they could be arrested. Now, up until now, Metro Transit police officers could only ask someone to pay the fare or leave the station. Now, the update is part of the newly signed Secure D.C. Crime Bill and only applies to metro stations in the district. Under the new law, anyone who refuses to provide their true name and address could be arrested and face the fine for failing to comply. In Maryland and Virginia, skipping fares is already carrying a $100 fine there. Well, today is also the last full day of the first round of drug-free zones in the district. Now, the zones expired 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. D.C. police reinstated the zones last Thursday, all part of the secured D.C. bill as well. ACLU and some people living here in D.C., they've raised concerns the zones disproportionately target communities of color. And new tonight, a victim has now been identified in Friday's, uh, Friday's deadly hit and run crash in Prince George's County. It happened on Branch Avenue and Suitland Parkway in Temple Hills. Police say 48 year old Carlos Barrett was found lying on the roadway and Branch Avenue. So far, no arrests have been made. I heard a huge explosion and of course I was terrified. In Virginia, some neighbors in Innadale had a scary early morning wake up as crews battled a house fire. Someone calling 911 describing what sounded like an explosion just before 4 a.m. Crews arrived to Ann Fitzhugh Drive and found flames coming through the roof of that home. That's where we find Northern Virginia Bureau reporter Haley Mylon with the very latest now. More than 12 hours since the fire first started here on Ann Fitzhugh Drive in Annandale. And now crews are getting to the point where they're cutting down some of the tall trees surrounding the home. The trees actually caught fire as well as the home. Look at the extent of the damage to the house. There's holes on both the left and the right side of the roof. The windows have been shattered for firefighters to access those. Fortunately, with all of this damage, no one was hurt. I was up, you know, I don't sleep well, so it was about four in the morning. I heard a huge explosion and of course I was terrified and there's maybe five or 10 minute lapse and then I heard fire engines and ambulances. Fairfax County fire officials haven't confirmed whether the fire began after an explosion, but dozens of neighbors in the Churro community report hearing a huge boom just before 4 a.m. So we woke up and my husband looked out our window and he said it was a big fire. So we looked out and we the house was just ablaze. Fire crews met with tricky conditions. We had fire on multiple floors of the structure. 
uh, which presented some challenges. And as we entered entered the structure, because the fire was so well advanced, there had been some partial collapses into the structure. A family member tells DC News now that the homeowner wasn't home at the time and a cat got out safely. Crews stayed on the scene for hours, going through debris and checking for pop-up fires under the rubble. Investigators still working to determine what happened. Eager neighbors awaiting those answers. God, it's just unbelievable to have something like that happen in your neighborhood. Officials did tell DC News Now that they don't believe there's any threat to neighboring homes. For now, in Fairfax County, Haley Mylon, DC News Now.